Hey guys, in this video we're going to be taking a look at the Eshin X73 brushed quadcopter. It's another micro here that kind of resembles and sort of reminds you of the tiny whip a little bit here. And let me uh, bring this into the shot here and you can kind of see the X73 is quite a bit larger. It doesn't have the ducted fans like the uh, Inductrix here. And uh, it has like these clear plastic bumpers which kind of work okay um, I have flown this a little bit and uh, I'll give you my thoughts here in a little bit on that but let's first go over what is on the quad itself it comes just like this out of the box already assembled and um, this is the box it comes in there's nothing nothing all that spectacular about it it's a uh, just a plain old box and it does come pretty well protected inside with with some foam um, so it didn't come damaged however um, a couple of things to note here the uh, plug here for the back of the camera right here was unplugged and uh, the wire seems to be a bit short so it it does force you to um, pull the camera uh, back at an angle and as you can see here the there's a there's a screw and a nut here that is not that's supposed to be in here this is what it looks like right here and that's supposed to be in there to hold the camera in place uh, but that was loose in the box for some reason it wasn't attached so the camera is not actually um, attached right now so I need to uh, either find a way to get this back on here or um, glue it on or find some other way of attaching the camera so that it doesn't um, just pop off in a crash so right now it's just loose so the camera VTX combo all-in-one uh, looks pretty similar to uh, what comes with the tiny QX90 and here's the back of that camera here and as you can see that they're pretty similar the same dip switches and looks like a lot of the same components even the power is in the same spot it's just that on uh, the X73 the camera is you know uh, tilted at a 90 degree angle compared to the QX90 and additionally the antenna is not soldered on it's using this uh, micro FL connector so it is removable um, also the uh, X X73 is using a whip antenna a linear antenna instead of the cloverleaf here of the uh, uh, X73 I did look at the image of this and out of the box the image it was uh, very unfocused the camera was not focused at all from the factory so you do need to um, focus by the image by uh, twisting the lens here and then uh, I got to focus once I got to focus I looked at the the video quality and it looks pretty much identical to the um, camera that came with the QX90 the only other thing that came in the box was this USB adapter and it's a little dongle that lets you connect to your computer it comes with this cable and a little four pin connector at the end and that's because uh, this particular quad does not come with a USB um, port you have to plug in the cable over here on the side and um, this button over here is a uh, bootloader button so if you want to flash uh, say like beta flight or update your clean flight you have to go into bootloader mode by pressing this and plugging in your USB cable and I actually have already flashed this to beta flight 3 and it flies pretty well on that the button over here is for the uh, micro free sky receiver so uh, that's for for doing your binding so uh, you just hold and press that and then plug in for uh, the um, either the battery power or you plug in your USB cable and that'll power the receiver and of course have your Tyrannus in bind mode and it will go ahead and bind it it's pretty simple um, so something that's uh, interesting about this quad it doesn't have a carbon frame like a lot of the other ones uh, the frame itself is actually the PCB and you can see here that these uh, seven millimeter motors have little connectors here that 
um, connect right to the board. So uh, should make for easy replacements when uh, down the road after these motors uh, wear out. Should be able to get some replacement motors and pop them in pretty easily. There's some, uh, I believe they're blue LEDs in the front and red in the back. I forget, I might be might be reversed. But there's some little LEDs here in the front and in the back that power uh, come on and uh, when you arm the quad you'll see the little lights. So it lights up in the video as well, it's pretty interesting. The battery holder back here, oh speaking of which, this doesn't come with any batteries which was kind of uh, surprising because all of these kits have come with batteries, usually two. This one came with zero. So I tried to find a battery that would fit this space here and it's very tight. It's only about seven and a half to eight millimeters. And so the only battery that I could find that would fit this was, is this 300 uh, milliamp hour one cell with a micro low C connector. And that barely fit. You're going to need a pretty skinny battery to get that in there. Um, and this is the only 300 milliamp hour battery I have. All the other ones I have are too big. They're usually like 500 to 600 and they're a little too big for this, this space. So possibly something smaller like a 260 might be better. Um, not exactly sure. I'll have to get some of those batteries to see if they if they perform better or not. It did fly okay. Uh, I can't say anything remarkable about the power. These are seven millimeter motors, and I'm more used to flying the eight and a half millimeter motors, so the power difference is definitely noticeable. And this definitely isn't the lightest uh, that I've seen out there. So let's just show you what the weight is like. Okay, so this is without the battery and all the FPV stuff, and it comes in at about 27.8 grams. And the Tiny Whoop, with all of its stuff on, no battery, is only about a little over 20 grams. So uh, the weight difference is pretty substantial. Although, granted, these are the Tiny Whoop is using 6 millimeter motors, and the X73 is using 7 millimeter motors, but uh, the uh, lack of power is definitely noticeable. When you're flying this. And then something else that should be noted is that these little um, end caps here for the motor uh, have a tendency to fall off. So I'm not sure if there's a, way, a better way to uh, secure this because um, in, in a crash, if you crash somewhere and it pops off in like grass or something, it's going to be pretty hard to find. Uh, although uh, you probably still need this because if you do happen to land on the motor stem here, it'll have a tendency to pop the bottom of the motor off, and in which case the motor is pretty much dead at that point. You have to get a new one. So um, there might be you might need to find a way to secure these little end caps uh, a little bit better because they tend to come off pretty easily. Oh, another thing that uh, I forgot to mention is that uh, this uh, did not come with any spare propellers. These are the only propellers you get. Uh, I don't know if spare propellers are available or not, but it, they, they, you know, it's very strange because uh, usually they give you spare props, um, batteries, charger, all that stuff. This one didn't come with any of that stuff. No spare props, no batteries, no, no charging cables, no prop remover. It's pretty, it's very sparse, very bare. So I found it a little bit surprising that it's so little came with this. And uh, uh, no instructions as well. Uh, there was no paperwork in there in terms of like how to set up your Tyrannus or how to bind. Uh, it just assumes that, that you already know all that stuff. Um, if I had just bought this uh, and had not purchased or built the QX90, the QX80, any of those other brushed quadcopters before, I probably would have had a pretty difficult time figuring out how to get this set up because there's no instructions and um, I, will, I was only able to really set this up pretty easily because I, I've done so many of these before and I've had experience but someone who just bought this uh, as a newbie and doesn't know what they're doing probably will have some um, difficulties getting this set up. Uh, another thing that I want to point out here is that the uh, FreeSky receiver that comes with this is soldered on directly right there. I don't know if you can see that. There's some pins that come up off the, the board, and uh, the wires just is soldered on directly. And then the antenna that comes off here is, is also removable, like the antenna for the FPV camera. Um, but 
it was just sort of sticking out here in the back right actually sitting right on top of the prop so you need to figure out a way to get this sort of up and out of the way so it doesn't get uh, chopped up by the propeller so I just stuck it in here behind this um, power wire and uh, that seems to be okay for now although I'm not too confident that it's going to stay there uh, securely but it seemed to be okay for the uh, initial flights the um, the board that is on here is a NAS32 type board so when you uh, try to go and flash your firmware uh, you need to pick the NAS32 target and the SBUS receiver is going to be on UART2. Anyway guys I'll go ahead and I'll roll some flight footage here for you. I think they definitely missed the mark on this particular model. I wish they would have included uh, extra batteries and propellers and definitely some instructions. Uh, the weight's a little bit heavier than I was hoping for and it does uh, affect the performance somewhat. Um, they definitely have some quality control issues here with uh, the camera mounting. Um, other than that, I think it's pretty decent. I'm a little bit worried that the PCB here might crack in a crash, um, especially if uh, if you hit something pretty hard but and then also these bumpers don't seem to be um, particularly strong either they they do give but I have a feeling that they're they'll probably break here or here at the stem if you in a hard crash so something to be aware of um, so you might have to look for some spare parts some spare propellers um, uh, prop guard and uh, if you happen to break the arm here uh, then you have to get a whole new frame basically so and um, also you gotta figure out what the best batteries are for this so probably 300 milliamp to 200 milliamp and they have to be thinner than about 8 millimeters to slide in that spot or somehow you need to find a way to modify this so that it'll take a larger battery but then again, I don't think you want to be adding too much additional weight to this because it's just going to uh, fly worse and, uh, as, it get, as it gets heavier. Anyway, you guys, here's some flight footage for you. And let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below. And I'll talk to you guys in the next video.